Hi, welcome to PK YouTube channel. This is Origin of Humans Part 3. I hope you guys remember Origin of Humans Part 2. We stopped when fishes evolved into proto-amphibians called Tiktaalik. We got the fossil of Tiktaalik from North America. So since we stopped last episode when the life came out of water to land. So I thought we can start this episode by talking about land. Yes. <laughs> I know you all have seen this, you all have seen a globe. Let's talk about the origin of globe. The first seamless globe was invented by a scientist called Ali Kashmiri Ibn Luqman. He was a geologist and metallurgist who was living at the time of an Indian king, Akbar. Then there are European records of Christian missionaries about the globe they bought from the markets of Sindh and Delhi as a prized possession. Those globes were made by another Indian metallurgist and scientist called Muhammad Sali Tatwi. He was living during the time of the king, Shah Jahan. So that's about the globe, the medieval time itself. The we were trying to represent the landmass on a flat surface on a paper, obviously for convenience. And different method of projection of a globe from a sheet of paper was there. Until Gerardo Mercator, an Italian astronomer, came up with Mercator projection, which we are using even now. This is the landmass we live in. This is all we got in this universe. We human beings can only live here. But there is a small problem in this kind of projection. Places like North America and Europe is shown in a bigger size than it actually is. This is the real size of North America and Europe when compared to Africa and India. But anyway, let's leave that. Let's use the traditional Mercator projection for now. We all thought the land was like this from the start of Earth until the idea of continental drift was introduced and a German geologist called Alfred Wegener in 2012 came up with this perfect idea of a pre-continent Pangea. That all the seven continents that we see here and there were all grouped up to form a supercontinent called Pangea. But Wagner thought the continents are moving because of the rotation of Earth. But later geologists learned about the interior of Earth and they understood that the continents are moving because of a cycle called, later named on a geologist called Wilson, it's known as Wilson cycle. And they figured out the continents are moving because of the movement of the crust of magma from the interior of Earth. But people then also thought Pangea was the first landmass that was there as the Earth was formed. But then later, geologist, American geologist called J.J. Rogers studied about different landmasses and he understood as the global ocean was retrieving the first landmasses came into existence it was a big landmass called Ur, which we can call as the first continent. He understood major parts of Ur are still existing in India, Africa and Australia. But what was there before Pangea was still a confusion? Different geologists like Moore, Valentin, Pipe, they all came with different supercontinents that were existing before Pangea. Until a guy from Kerala, Santosh, he teamed up with the geologist from America, J.J. Rogers, and they figured everything out. They gave clarity to the idea of supercontinent cycle, that all the major landmasses of the world always join to form a supercontinent, and the supercontinent will automatically breaks up and then reach 
joins to form another supercontinent. And then that supercontinent will like break up and another supercontinent will be formed. This supercontinent cycle happens in every 500,000 million years. And Mr. Rogers and Santosh said before Pangea there was a supercontinent, Panosia. And before Panosia there was Rodinia. And before Rodinia there was Nuna. And before Nuna there was Ur. So let's figure out what really happened to our land. Let's go back to the time when Earth was getting solidified and water that came from the asteroids filled the Earth completely and there was, as you can see, there was nothing, there was no land and the entire Earth was filled with water. <sighs> oh, there was water! Just kidding. It was like that for half billion years at least. Our Earth was covered by water that came with the asteroids. And as our Earth's temperature started coming down, magma from interior found its way out and solidified to big landmasses, what we call as cratons. By the time it was 3.5 billion years ago, the first landmasses of our Earth, Darwar, Singbum, Madagascar, Kapwal, and Pilbara cratons were formed. These earliest cratons of Earth are now part of bigger landmasses like Africa, Madagascar, India, and Australia. As time passed, these early cratons moved close to each other and joined to form the first supercontinent of our Earth, which J.J. Rogers named as Ur. Later more magma formation happened and Ur became bigger. Some scientists call this bigger Ur, extended Ur, constituting to what is now Eastern Africa, Madagascar, Southern India and Western Australia. If we go to these places in Africa, India and Australia shown in the map, we will see similar looking places which were once together as a supercontinent, Ur. By that time, other craterns like Antarctica, parts of North America, parts of Europe, parts of China, parts of South America have also formed and the breakup of the first supercontinent, Ur, also happened. These new early continents are actually made of multiple cratons. Like North America, you see, is made of different small cratons like Superior, Greenville, Slab. And Baltic cratons includes other cratons like Kola, Karelian, Finian, Norwegian and all. Just to make things look simple, we are using names of countries and continents where those cratons are part of now. Almost after one billion years after the breakup of Ur, all the present supercratons joined to form the first complete supercontinent, which has all the continents present now. Santosh and Rogers named this supercontinent Nuna, also known as Columbia, where by that time, microorganisms, eukaryotes and microscopic fungus started appearing. Nuna was somewhat positioned on the South Pole, what happens when supercontinents are formed is that they act like blankets on Earth, trapping heat below its surface. Due to increase in temperature, magma from interior rises up through the weakest areas of the supercontinent and break it up. Thus Nuna also got broken up and in almost another thousand million years, all the broken cratons of Nuna joined together to form the next supercontinent called Rodinia. The position of Rodinia on Earth was also somewhat favoring the South Pole. By this time, sponges, the first living thing that can be seen with naked eyes, got formed in ocean. Slowly, Rodinia started splitting up. And it is believed that the minerals from Rodinia that got mixed up in the ocean water during the time of its breakup played a major role in the happening of Cambrian explosion. 
the explosion of ocean life forms. On land, the microfungus started getting bigger. Slowly, they developed into 10 feet long fungi and they actively disintegrated the earth's surface which was like a hard rock in those days into fertile soil. And by the time second last supercontinent of the supercontinent cycle, Panosia was formed. First vascular land plants started forming on the fertile soil made by the fungi. This was how land on the time of Panosia used to look like. You can see the giant fungi and almost one meter long land plants. Changes continued to take place. Panosia also broke up. Those plants evolved into tall trees, which looked mostly like palm trees. Those trees dominated fungi in terrestrial presence. Those first trees were non-flowering, hence had no fruits or seeds. And within thousand million years after the breakup of Panosia, the last supercontinent of supercontinent cycle, Pangaea, was formed. Pangaea was positioned almost at equator, spanning to both hemispheres equally. The southern part, Antarctica, India, Australia, South Africa and South America, used to cover with snow for most of the times. And along with the giant ferns and palm trees, there were giant worms that weigh almost 100 kilos and there were giant insects which could spread their wings as wide as 10 meters. They roamed on Pangaea. How those insects and worms were evolved is still a mystery. This is how Pangaea looked like when there was no snow. And it is to this Pangaea, first fishes to breathe oxygen like Tiktaalik and Ichthyostega, entered from the deadly low oxygen shallow waters. What happened next? Were our ancestors ready for the giant worms of Pangaea? Let's see in the next episode.